Robots are designed based on the work envelope required. The volume, the end effector of this robot is able to reach, is known as the work envelope. For example, for this robot shown, the blue shade volume is the work envelope. Let's learn more about this crucial concept of robotics. The work envelope is different for different robots. A robot's work envelope depends on three physical characteristics. The first one is the range of the robot's joints. Both the linear and angular range of a robot is illustrated here. The second characteristic is the size of its body, arm and wrist. The last characteristic is the type of joints. Different work envelopes are created by modifying these three characteristics. Let's understand these concepts with the help of a robot design challenge. Suppose we have to collect some boxes from a conveyor belt and place them in this highlighted location. The work envelope required for the robot is obviously rectangular in shape. Can you guess what type of robot configuration is the best fit to complete this task? Yes, you'd need a robot with linear motions in all three directions inside this volume. This robot has three linear joints to accomplish movement in the X, Y, and Z directions. This robot's end effector can pick up the object anywhere inside this rectangular work envelope, move in all three axes, and place it as needed. These kinds of robots are called Cartesian robots. Now, let's consider the same robot, but this time it's using a different end effector, a metal cutter. Here, due to the nature of the work, the operator has to be inside the work envelope we defined earlier, which can be highly dangerous. For safety purposes, you won't want this new end effector to go near the operator's hand. In short, you have to block the robot's movement in the Y direction after this red plane. To achieve this end, engineers often restrict the movement of the robot by using electromechanical limit switches, which creates a border beyond which the bot cannot go in any given conditions. In short, even though the work envelope is huge, this robot will be able to work only within this red volume. This new red volume is called an operating envelope. Let's move to our next robot and study a different work envelope. Let's assume that the robot has to move these boxes from one conveyor belt to another. The work envelope needed for this task is obviously cylindrical in nature. Can you suggest some design modifications to the previous robot to achieve the new work envelope? To attain the cylindrical volume, we need two linear movements and one rotary movement. Simply replace one linear joint from the Cartesian robot with a rotary joint. Now, the robot can rotate 360 degrees on its central axis. These kinds of cylindrical robots are mainly used to work as mediators between two or three massive machines to transfer an object from one station to another. If you observe carefully, you can see that the work envelope here is not a solid cylinder. It has a dead zone at the center. Can you tell why? This dead zone is due to the robot body's physical limitation. In this case, you can see that the robot's arm can retract only up to its body and not beyond that. Thus, a dead zone volume will always be inside the cylindrical robot's work envelope. However, such dead zones are not present inside the Cartesian robot's work envelope. With a simple design modification, we can convert this cylindrical robot into a more versatile robot which does tasks like welding this car chassis together. For this task, the robot has to turn at different complicated angles. The cylindrical robot cannot perform this task. All you have to do to achieve it is replace one more linear joint with a rotary joint. Here, this rotary joint can go from approximately positive 30 degrees to the bottom of the ground. 
Now, using your visualization skill, can you predict this robot's work envelope? Just revolve this shape 360 degrees in the z-axis. What you get is a partially spherical work envelope. These kinds of spherical robots can easily complete this welding task with an angle. What you see in the central area is the dead zone of a partial spherical configuration. This space can be an efficiency weakness. If we replace the last linear joint from our bot with another rotary joint, this will make it a revolute coordinate robot, which should reduce the dead zone and give the bot more reach. This robot looks similar to a human arm, right? Now the new challenge. Let's deduce its work envelope. First, let's freeze the z-axis rotation and figure out the 2D work envelope which arises due to the robot's remaining two rotary arms. When both the arms are fully stretched, the end effector can draw a circle of 280 degrees. You can observe from the top view why this joint cannot go beyond this 280 degree angular limit. Anyway, this is the biggest circle this robot can draw. Now, we need to figure out the smallest circle this robot can trace. This robot traces the smallest circle possible when the arms are folded like this. However, after a certain movement, the circle can't be traced further because the lower arm will touch the robot's body. The trick to extend the circle tracing is simple. Just fold the arms the opposite way. Now, you can trace the circle further. This is the combined 2D shape these two arm rotations can trace. Now, figuring out the final work envelope is easy. The last rotary joint at the base can move the whole robot 360 degrees. So, just revolve the 2D shape 360 degrees. There you go. This robot has a spherical work envelope. This fully spherical robot has a dead zone as well, which is much smaller than the previous configuration. In many industries, advanced versions of these robots with more complex rotary joints are used for assembly lines, welding, spray painting, etc. Knowing the work envelope helps you in many ways. We hope you now understand robots' work envelopes. See you in the next advanced video on robotics. Don't forget to be a member of the Lessex team. Thank you.